In this video, I want to talk about the conditions for consistency of IV estimators. So let's first of all remind ourselves of what the expression for beta hat IV is. The numerator is the sample covariance between our instrument Z and Y, the dependent variable, where we're talking about a model where we've got Y is equal to alpha plus beta X plus epsilon. And the denominator in our expression is the sample covariance of Z with X. When we're talking about consistency, what we're meaning is how does our estimator behave as n tends to infinity? Or how, strictly, how does the expected value of our estimator behave as n tends to infinity? When we talk about n tending to infinity, we write the probability limit of beta hat IV. And when we actually have the entirety of the population's data, which is when we have n as being infinite, we can replace these sample analogues here by their population quantity. So the numerator now becomes the covariance of z with y, and the denominator becomes the covariance of z with x, when in both of these expressions, implicit is the fact that we're talking about population quantities. Using this expression for the probability limit of beta hat IV, and using the fact that we know the explicit form of y, we can substitute in for y using the model which is given above, and we get something which looks like this. We get the covariance of z with alpha plus beta x plus epsilon, and the denominator doesn't change, so we still have the covariance of z with x on the bottom. So this numerator term here is in principle built up from three separate terms. The first is to do with the covariance of z with alpha, which, because alpha is a constant, is equal to zero. And then the second term is just the covariance of z with x times beta divided by the covariance of z with x, so we just get a beta for the second term. And then finally we get, as our last term, the covariance of z with epsilon divided by the covariance of z with x. And straight away we can see that our estimator, our IV estimator, is going to be asymptotically unbiased if we have that the covariance of z with epsilon is equal to zero. However, let's think about a slightly sort of weak, well, a very weak and a sort of slightly bad estimator, which has the properties that the covariance of z with epsilon doesn't quite equal zero, it equals some sort of non-zero value a, which is very small, but it is still greater than zero. So that's saying that we have a slightly bad instrument. And also we have the fact that the covariance of z with x is some small number b, which is around zero, but only just different from zero then you can sort of see that we could rewrite our probability limit of our IV estimator as being equal to beta plus A divided by B. And you can see here that if our instrument is sufficiently weak, in other words, B is sufficiently small when compared to how bad our instrument is, or, or A here in the expression, then we can actually have a probability limit for our IV estimator which is actually a long way away from the true parameter beta. So B, having a sort of weak instrument in principle can amplify any sort of slight deviation from our instrument not being a perfect instrument in, in the sense of any sort of slight, slightly bad aspect of our instrument is gonna get amplified a lot by our fact that we're having a weak instrument because we're taking essentially how bad our instrument is, which is this A term here, and we're dividing it through by B here. So if B is very, very small, then you can see that A over B is large. So in those circumstances, you can see that the probability limit of beta hat IV very much does not equal beta, the true population parameter. In the next video, we are going to compare the asymptotic biasness of IV estimators with that of least squares estimators. I'll see you then.